Okay, we're going to look at some graphs of function notation. So this question here, um, given the graph of the function f at x below, find all of these wonderful values, and then we can state, state the domain range. So we'll do that for 6 and 7 here. Um, so in the first question here, remember that this is a function of f at x. In other words, the value in the brackets is asking for the x value on a graph. Okay, So think of it like this. We're used to seeing x and maybe y here, okay? Because we're using function notation, think of it as we still have x in the x place, but in the y place, think of that as f at x, okay? Whatever f at x equals, that's actually what y is. So in the very first question, they've said f at 6. Well, 6 is replacing x, so we know we have a coordinate of 6, okay? So we've got to find f at 6 on here. So what is f at 6? Well, f at 6, or x, sorry, at 6, let me jump up, is here. So this is f at 6. So for our function, we know that f, there you go, sorry, f at 6 is equal to, what's the y value? Well, the y value happens to be the value of 2. So f at 6 is 6 and 2 in this case. So find f at 6, f, we know we found it, we give it <clears throat> the value on the graph, and if we want it to equate something, we can tell them it is equate or equivalent to the number 2. We can do that throughout the entire thing, okay? Same idea, f at 3.5, okay? We know that the x value is 3.5, and they want us to find the y value. So we travel the 3 on the x-axis here. We go halfway between, and ooh, this is a tough one. I think think it's about 2 again. So it looks like it's 2 once again in this case. So we can say, yeah. there it is. And depending on when they say find, that's a little arbitrary. I don't know if they want us to give them a quantitative number, which is where I'm doing, I'm giving the number 2, or they literally just want us to label it on a graph. I could say, you know, that this is A, and that this part here, this is actually B. So they might be wanting us to label stuff. So just keep that in mind. We could always do both, if that's what the requirement is. Find is um, a bit arbitrary to me. But anytime we are dealing with this in the brackets, you're essentially traveling along your x-axis here, okay? So just keep that in mind anytime you're answering a question like this. f at negative 2, we travel over to negative 2, we go up to our f value. Hey, looks like the value is 2 again, and I can label that as c. f at 0, we're on 0 on the x-axis. That could be the label of d, and we know that that happens to equal to 1, 2, 3, 4. Looks like it's the value of 5. Now, e and f are a little different. Find the value of x when f at x is equal to 2. Well, equal to 2, we're going to put a line across 2 here. And we're going to look at all the points of intersection. 1, 2, 3, 4. And it turns out we have four points of intersection. So when f at x is equal to 2, we know x is equal to, has many different values. We have one here at negative 2. We have another one at, I'm going to say that's 1, another one at 3.5, which we found earlier, and we have another one at 6. So these are all the potential answers when f at x is equal to 2, okay? Same idea with 7. We can draw a horizontal line across 7, and we're looking for the points of intersection, and it looks like they're at negative 5 and negative 3.5, I'm guessing. So f at x when it equals to 7 x is equal to negative 5 and negative 3.5 are my guesses, okay? And again, they may ask you to label that, you know, that you could say that these are all answers, oops, those weren't E, those were F, and these were all the answers for E, anything across there, okay? The domain or range of this function, that's really important too, let's use blue. Um, domain is the x domain, so that's the um, independent variables. Uh, we'll commonly write x is the element of all real numbers such that, and does your teacher get you to write it that way for the set, x, e, r, or anything like that? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, so x is the element of all real numbers such that. So we've written out our precursor here. Um, we're looking for left to right, how far does it go? So we know it goes to here, and we know it ends over here. Those are the values of negative 6 and positive, that was a crooked line, positive 8. We'll have negative 6, we have x, and we have positive 8. We'll end the function. 
What we do have to recognize is this is a filled in circle and this is a hollow circle. That does make a difference. Filled in means it's also equal to. So we know x is less than, because eight's the largest number, and equal to, because it's a filled in value. But because it's a hollow six, uh, x is actually just greater than negative six. It's not equal to. Anytime they have that hollow, that means there's not the equal sign to it also, okay? Range, or codomain, depending on what they call it, is how high up and down it goes. So we know it goes up to the value of positive eight, and it goes down to the value, I'm gonna round this to negative four. Uh, I guess we'll write it in green, it's a little easier to see. Same idea is y is the element of all real numbers, which means this is a continuous function. All values between this exist, such that the lowest value was negative four, the highest value was eight, and we close our set, we put the variable y. Um, and in this one, oh, I lied, I'm so sorry. This was the lowest point here, not negative four. So let's get rid of that. It's not negative four, but negative five. <clears throat> At negative 5, it was filled in the circle. So because it's filled in, we know it's equal to. So it's y is greater than and equal to negative 5. Here, we're touching 8. My assumption is that we're touching the value 8, so it's also equal to 8. It's possible that it's known as like an asymptote, but doesn't quite hit it. But because they didn't give us like a hollow point or a visual cue saying that it wasn't equal to it, I'm going to say that y is less than and equal to also 8. Okay? So then what we did up here, you can just kind of apply to the exact same stuff down here. Same concepts, you're just following the graph and picking out values as you go through it.